Welcome, fellow travelers, to my complete Arlecchino guide. In this comprehensive guide, we'll delve deep into the mechanics of the character, the best artifacts, weapons, team compositions, constellations, and much more. From unleashing devastating attacks to unlocking hidden synergies, every aspect of the character will be meticulously explored. I hope you like it, and if you do, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. You will help me out a lot and also follow me on my Twitch and Twitter. I will leave the links in the description if you're interested. So, let's dive in. First let's start with the 5-star weapons, of course the best 5-star weapon for her would be her signature, it gives you a very high base attack, some crit rate and its passive gives a bond of life equal to 25% of max HP when you hit an enemy with a charged attack. Additionally when the equipping character has a bond of life they gain a 12% bonus damage and if the value of the bond of life is equal or greater than 30% of max HP, you get an additional 24% bonus damage. For your second 5 star would be the Staff of Homa for the crit damage and bonus attack equal to your HP percent. For your third 5 star, I'd say that the Primordial Jade Winged Spear because it also gives you some crit rate, a 22.4% bonus attack and 12% bonus damage if you manage to accumulate all the stacks. For your fourth 5 star, the Staff of the Scarlet Sands because it gives a lot of crit rate, 52% of your elemental mastery as bonus attack, and if you manage to hit 3 opponents with your elemental skill then the character gets an 84% of elemental mastery as bonus attack for 10 seconds. And lastly for 4 star weapons. I'd say that Deathmatch and Black Cliff Pole are the only 4 stars that are worth it because both give crit stats and bonus attack. Oh and I almost forgot, the Ballad of the Fjords is also a good 4 star option and it's even better than Deathmatch and Black Cliff Pole because it also gives crit rate and if your party has 3 different element types, you get 120 elemental mastery, so for vaporized teams, that's very good. For her artifact sets, there's a few ones that she can use effectively. First is the new artifact set, Fragment of Harmonic Whimsy, with the 4-piece set you get an 18% attack increase, and when your bond of life increases or decreases then the character gets an 18% damage increase for 6 seconds, and it can accumulate up to 3 times. So in total you would get an 18% attack increase and 54% damage increase. For the second best artifact set, I'd say that it is the Vermilion Hereafter because it consistently gives a 66% attack increase as long as you keep decreasing your life which I'll explain how you can do it very easily, later on. For the third best artifact set, the Retracing Bolide because of the 35% shield strength and most importantly because of the 40% damage increase to normal and charged attacks, which you'll know why later on. For the fourth best artifact set, it will be the two-piece set Shimanawa plus two-piece set Gladiator because you easily get a 36% attack increase and most of you will probably have pieces with god tier stats by now. And lastly for the fifth best artifact set which in my opinion is the worst and I would only use it as my very last option, if I happen to have stats that are better than the other sets, the Echoes of Offering because it gives you an 18% attack increase and also 70% of your attack as normal attack damage bonus but that damage increase is very low compared to the damage of the other sets. And also the 4-piece gladiator is very good and most of you will also have artifacts with good substats, and for the main stats that you will need, it's an attack sans, a pyro damage bonus goblet and a crit rate or crit damage circlet depending on what you lack the most, and for, and for the main stats that you will need, it's an attack sans, a pyro damage bonus goblet and a crit rate or crit damage circlet depending on what you lack the most, and for the substats you need crit rate, crit damage, attack, and also elemental mastery for vaporized teams and some HP. Now for her constellations, you don't need them because even at C0 she's very broken, but if you can get to C2 that's more than enough. Her C1 makes the Mask of the Red Death stronger by granting her a 100% damage increase and increased resistance to interruption when doing normal and charged attacks while under the effect of the Mask of the Red Death. Her C2 transforms the Blood Debt Directives into Blood Debt Dues when first applied. When Arlecchino absorbs those dues, she unleashes her Elemental Burst in front of her, 
Dealing 900% of her attack as LE pyro damage and increasing her all elemental resistance and physical resistance by 20% for 15 seconds, keep in mind that this can only be done once every 10 seconds. Her C3 increases the normal attack by 3 levels. Her C4 reduces the cooldown of Arlequino's elemental burst by 2 seconds and she gets 15 energy when she successfully absorbs a blood debt directive, this can only be done once every 10 seconds. Her C5 increases the elemental burst by 3 levels. And lastly her C6 increases the damage of her elemental burst by Arlequino's attack multiplied by 700% of the current bond of life percentage. For 20 seconds after using the elemental skill, both her normal attacks and elemental burst gain 10% crit rate and 70% crit damage increase, this can only be done once every 15 seconds. Now let's start with her abilities. Arlequino's abilities revolve around managing her bond of life and dealing pyro damage. When her bond of life is equal or above 30% of her max HP, she enters a state called Mask of the Red Death, infusing her attacks with pyro, so you can use normal attacks, charged attacks, and plunging attacks that deal pyro damage. Her normal attacks in this state deal extra damage based on her attack and current bond of life percentage. Consuming 7.5% of the current bond of life and reducing the elemental skill cooldown by 0.8 seconds and this can be done every 0.03 seconds. Her elemental skill launches an attack that deals AoE pyro damage and applies a debuff called Blood Debt Directive to enemies. These directives last for 30 seconds and deal pyro damage every 5 seconds up to 2 times and when Arlequino uses her charged attack or elemental burst, she absorbs and clears those directives. Gaining a buff called Bond of Life equal to 65% of her max HP up to a max of 145% of her max HP and lasts for 35 seconds after you use the elemental skill, and when you reuse the elemental skill then the time duration of the buff and all the percentage of bond of life that you had will reset. Her elemental burst also absorbs and clears the directives from enemies around her, deals AoE pyro damage, heals Arlequino based on the bond of life and attack that she has and resets the cooldown of the elemental skill. Her first passive while in combat, she gains a 40% pyro damage bonus, and can only be healed through her elemental burst. Her second passive makes the blood debt directives grant Arlequino a bond of life worth 130% of her max HP when an opponent with a directive is defeated. After 5 seconds, directives become blood debt dues, granting Arlequino a bond of life also worth 130% when absorbed, however, these bonds of life cannot exceed the limits set by bonds obtained through the elemental skill. And lastly with her third passive, Arlequino gains a 1% increase to all elemental and physical resistance for every 100 attack that she has in excess of 1000. The maximum resistance increase that she can gain this way is 20%. Now for the best teams you will need a shielder like Shonli because Arlequino is very squishy and she cannot be healed thanks to her bond of life, so you can die very easily if you don't have a shield, with that being said, the first team will be Arlequino, Furina, Bennett and Zhongli but you can also replace Furina with Yelan or Shinchio, for the second team, Arlequino, Furina, Yelan and Zhongli. This one is also very good for doing some vapes, and lastly for the third team you can try this. Mono Pyro team with Arlequino, Kazuha, Bennett and Toma, with this team you will have a lot of bonus attack and bonus damage thanks to Kazuha and Bennett and also a shield thanks to Toma. And now for the best team rotation, of course we'll be using your other characters abilities first, so you will use the elemental bursts of Shinchio, Yelan, Furina, Bennett or whatever characters you are using and then you use the shield at last to have the most time shielded while doing damage with Arlequino because of course you don't want to run out of shield while attacking. The enemies in the floor 12 of the Spiral Abyss can one hit you very easily, well then, this will be the end of my guide. And as for the showcase, I will upload it later as a separate video, so feel free to watch it please, you will help me a lot and also don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you later, fellow travelers.